G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip I'm just going to be bringing you a bit of an update on what's been going on with cycling the aquaponics system. I'm going to add in a couple of small clips I shared with supporters, thank you very much supporters, and um, yeah, give you a bit of a roundup at the end of how we're travelling now. Basically what's happened is I've overdosed the system with ammonia through my own um, negligence and also had a bit of a pH issue, issue uh, with the pH falling. Um, which is also another symptom of um, overdosing the system a little bit. So anyway, um, we'll fire off these two short clips and um, yeah, I'll give you a bit of a wrap up at the end. How's it going folks? Thought I'd just bring you along and uh, show you a few stuff ups. Uh, the pH in the system is looking a lot better than it was earlier. It was sitting uh, below six and I've had to add in some calcium hydroxide as well as some garden lime in here to bring it up a little bit. I wondered why the uh, parsley wasn't doing so good. We have this one here just hanging on. Uh, this one here, only one plant hanging on, and this one over here the same. Yet the lettuce and the warrigal greens are just smashing it at the moment. They're looking very, very healthy. So obviously they don't mind a really low pH. So yeah, I'm also topping it up as well, so that'll help buffer it a little bit. At the moment, we are sitting at 6.7-ish. So we'll just wait and see um, what that looks like tomorrow. I actually had to recalibrate the whole thing because I hadn't used it since I was doing the hydro. Um, and I also needed to come down. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that mess in a minute. Also needed to come down and work out which of these was garden lime and which was calcium hydroxide. Worked out that the orange one is the calcium hydroxide because it sent the pH up to around about 12-ish, or just below 12. And this one here must be the garden lime because uh, the pH hardly moved at all. So at least I've got that uh, worked out now. Plus the system got a good dose of uh, both the garden lime and the hydroxide as I was working it out. Uh, the reason I need the hydroxide is for the mushrooms because I want to sterilize the wood pellets. I was going to shoot the clip this afternoon but just got a little bit sidetracked by a few other things. So I'll shoot that clip tomorrow. Um, I will need to buy some more though because there's only a small amount left in there because I do want to do some larger inoculation when some spawn blocks come that I ordered earlier in the week. Over here, we have a bit of an issue with the ammonia. I swapped what I was adding into the system. I found this just had a little bit left in it underneath the stairs. It's some Charlie carp that I bought before we moved back into the house. So it's been here for quite a while. It was sitting out the back and for whatever reason, it uh, sent the ammonia through the roof. I also have a sneaking suspicion that I double dosed. Uh, well, meaning I dosed one afternoon and then first thing the next morning, not paying attention and I've absolutely flooded the system with ammonia. Now, I'll pull this out to give you a closer look. It's really hard to show you a true reading with these colour tests on the camera, but it is not up there around eight parts per million. It's a little bit lighter, but it's still up fairly high, and it's at the level where it could be impeding the actual um, process of the um, nitrification. So I'm going to leave it until tomorrow, and oh, this time tomorrow, tomorrow night, around about 6 p.m. And if it hasn't come down at all, I will be dumping half the water, or at least enough to water the bits and pieces around the patch, and then adding in some top-up water. I have a feeling that the um, nitrous ammonas are still doing their job, and then the nitrobacter from the nitrite into nitrate, because that's coming up as trace at the moment. And I haven't done a nitrate um, reading now, but it is through the roof at the moment. Fingers crossed, I've just flooded the system to the point where the, um, the nitro simonas need to catch up. But like I said, if I do come back tomorrow and there's no change, I'm just going to have to dump half the water. Or at least a sump worth of water that is, not half the water from the whole system. I'll just pump it out and then top it up again and see how we go. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a stuff up on my part. I just figured that, you know, I might as well get rid of the little bit that was left in here. Uh, without realising that maybe because it was out in the sun for a little while it may have degraded back to ammonia. And yeah, that's caused a bit of an issue. So uh, what I'll do is I'll shoot another um, quick clip tomorrow night as well. Uh, just to show you how this has got on. And um, yeah, I might give you a bit of a sneak peek at um, what we got up to with the mushrooms as well. So I will pretty much will leave it there. Oh, actually, one last check of the pH to see if it's come up further than 6.7. Nah, looks like it's a solid 6-7 now. So that water coming in would be raising it a little bit, but um, yeah, not as much as the hydroxide that I popped in, as well as the carbonate. So yeah, I will leave it there. How's it going, folks? I've uh, just finished um, doing the test. 
And you might be able to see the ammonia is starting to get a little bit dark. So it's only been in there for a, um, about 60 seconds or so, maybe even less. So I might go for a bit of a wander down the back and then we'll come up and check that. Uh, before we do though, I thought I'd show you a few more victims for the patch. Um, I know I'm starting, you know, not starting... Oh! So the wind just blew over my test tube container and smashed one. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, what I was trying to say was I bought some more victims for the patch. Some will go in the aquaponics and some won't. Uh, I am buying seedlings, I know. Uh, it's a bit of a sin amongst some gardeners, but I just haven't um, basically got the seeds. I've got some uh, bok choy here, which I don't have seeds for, and they'll be going into the hydroponic system. I have some peas. These are the honeypod peas. I don't have any seeds that I can find in my drawers upstairs for these guys. So they're one of Bianca's favourites. They're going out. Um, probably down the back in a um, wicking bed situation. And some dill. I don't have any dill seeds either, so I figured I might as well just buy some of these rather than try and um, get some seeds in and be behind the eight ball. So yeah, that's what's going out in the patch. Found a couple more large shards of that test tube. A bit here with the ammonia. Do this one-handed. I'm very pleased to report that it looks like it has gone down a bit. It doesn't look like that to you folks, but I can guarantee you it is a little bit lighter. There we go, there's a better angle. You can tell it has dropped a fair bit from the eight parts per million from yesterday. So, the good news is, um, I'll just leave that there for now. The good news is I don't have to worry about um, dumping any of the water out of here. It's just gonna take a day or two for it to um, yeah, use up the ammonia. So I'll just pop the pH probe down in there as well. And I'm going to guess that the pH has fallen as the alkalinity I added yesterday has been chewed up. So I just thought I'd add this explanation about alkalinity and aquaponics in here. Alkalinity is basically the ability of water to be able to withstand acid being added to it. Uh, it's generally um, alkalinity is based on your carbonates and bicarbonates. Uh, levels within the water and what you'll find is with the nitrification process that's the ammonia turning from oh, ammonia into nitrite and then into nitrate some of that reaction that's carried out by the bacteria also consumes some of that alkalinity so because I overdosed the system with a load of ammonia uh, those bacteria have got straight to work and they've had to convert it all and as a result they've chewed up a lot of alkalinity yeah I just thought I'd fill you in with that now back to the clip. So yesterday we were sitting at 6.7. And there we go. If the phone will stop flashing backwards and forwards, we're sitting at 4.8, 4.9. So we'll just give it a few minutes. I gave it less than a minute, but yeah, it's sitting at 4.8, 4.9. So I dare say that the rainwater that we, has gone into the system, as well as all the uh, <laughs> extra ammonia, has definitely led to um, the alkalinity being chewed up in the pH dropping. But yeah, as you can see, the plants don't look too affected. The ones I am really worried about are the parsley because they virtually have not grown at all. They're just sort of sitting in limbo at the moment. So what I'm gonna have to do is add in a load of calcium hydroxide, which means a trip to Bunnings or the hardware store to buy some more as I've only got a little bit left and I'm using that for the mushrooms upstairs, so that's a little bit annoying. I really didn't want to have to venture out again. So yeah, I suppose that's a job for tomorrow. So as you can see from those little clips, things went a little bit pear-shaped here. But I am happy to say today that we're pretty much all back on track. I actually did this test a little while ago, and you can probably make out that the ammonia is around about 25 parts per million or milligrams per litre. The nitrite is, yeah, pretty much well trace. Um, don't, can't get much bluer than that. And the good news is that the nitrite, nitrate, sorry, is sitting around about 40 to 80 parts per million or milligrams per litre. So pretty chuffed about that. And because we are using a fish emulsion, which isn't just ammonia, we are getting other nutrients in there. 
So that's why the plants are looking so green at the moment. Uh, one other issue we have had with the plants is caterpillars. We're starting to see a lot of caterpillars um, on the lettuce here. I squished a few the other day and also a couple over on the warrigal greens as well. So I'm basically just going over them twice a day trying to find them and squish them at the moment. There is a product you can use in aquaponics called Bacillus thuringiensis. Uh, over here in Australia, we can buy it from the hardware shop in a product called Nature's Way Dipole. It's actually a bacteria that once it enters into the caterpillar's guts, it knocks them off that way, it kills them. Um, so it's safe for your fish, safe for us mammals and amphibians and also birds as well. So we don't have to worry about getting poisoned by it. So that's something I can spray on here. I'll, I'll just see if I can um, knock them on the head by going around and squishing them to begin with. And um, yeah, if I can't get on top of them, then I will use the Bacillus thuringiensis. And just to give you a closer look at these Warrigal greens, they are doing rather well. I have found that these guys are one of the first plants to show up any new uh, deficiencies, um, nutrient deficiencies like iron and whatnot. Um, so with them looking this healthy and putting on all this growth, I'm pretty pleased that there's a load of other nutrients other than just ammonia and nitrates in the system. One other thing I know I'm going to be asked is when are we getting fish? Well, um, let me just swap this camera around, hey? Well, due to what's going on in the world at the moment, I can't really nip on out to um, a mate's place and grab a couple of fish. Um, it's just, yeah, we've, we're in lockdown here at the moment and we're supposed to be staying home. So I won't be able to pop out there and get them. I may be able to source some from a hatchery and get them delivered. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. But I can't really do anything with mum and dad's system at the moment, um, mainly because mum and dad are both in the high risk category. So we're trying to limit exposure to them. Um, Bianca has traveled on public transport and that sort of thing. So yeah, and I've been out shopping and I, we just don't want to risk, you know, if on the slightest chance that we have something that we're going to pass it on. So we're pretty much all staying away from them. But yeah, fingers crossed, I might be able to get some delivered from a hatchery. Uh, it's just a bit of a waiting game at the moment. That's it for the aquaponics, but just wanted to let you folks know that I've got a couple of garden beds I need to make down the back and I will be filming a little bit of an explanation on how I'm making up a few different wicking beds. So if you want to be brought up to date with them and the other mushroom clips that I'll be posting in the next week or two, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button down there and then pound on the bell icon once it appears and YouTube will hopefully, fingers crossed, send you a notification once it's uploaded to YouTube. And yeah, you can come along and say good day and check it out. I would like to thank you all for continuing to support the channel by coming along and watching the clips and sharing them around with your friends. I really do appreciate it. Also I'd like to thank those awesome folks on the Farm Your Own Yard website and the YouTube membership page for continuing to support the channel. And please do check out our super contributors. Links as always are in the description down below. It'd be great if you could uh, hop on over to their websites and check out what they're all about. But I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and I will catch you later. Cheers all, have a top one. We're starting to see a lot of small caterpillars. We're starting to see a lot of caterpillars. Um...